In this video, uh, we'll continue to learn some properties of uh, Brownian motion. Um, here, we're going to learn the oxine law of uh, Brownian motion. Okay. And uh, what is this oxine of law? Is we consider uh, the following thing. If we defy uh, p sub plus, this is a time. A, a standard Brownian motion is uh, greater than zero during uh, zero to one. Then we can um, then its distribution is uh, of a arc sine distribution. In that, this is the same thing as uh, um, the probability of t plus is less than t. The same as pi divided by 2 uh, arc sine of uh, square root of t for any t is in uh, 0 to 1. Okay, and to, to, uh, to show this, uh, we need to use uh, something we learned in reflection principle, and this a uh, maximum of uh, Brownian motion process. And let's recall that in the reflection principle lecture, we defined something, a maximum Brownian motion process. By the way, this is stochastic as well. This is m of t is the maximum of, uh, Brownian, of the Brownian motion, of this standard Brownian motion between 0 and t. And we show that uh, this one is greater than or equal to a is the same thing as uh, two times the probability of this uh, w of t is greater than or equal to a for for some uh, for some a is greater than zero. All right, and now let's consider the following thing. We used some asymmetric argument and strong market property to argue that, um, to argue actually to get the distribution of this uh, maximum pro uh, this process. If we think about, think about this as a t, okay. If we have a Brownian motion that's uh, that ended up here, let's say that is greater than a, let's say this is b, okay, this, this is a, and this is minus a, then there exists a mirror Brownian motion that ended up in minus b, okay? So the number of Brownian motion ended up above zero is the same as the number of Brownian motion ended up below zero. As a result, uh, this probability by symmetry is the same thing as um, Brownian motion. So we keep one copy, but we replace the other copy by the probability of this Brownian motion is less than or equal to minus a. If we look at this, this is actually the same as because, uh, by the way, uh, these two events are disjoint. It means the Brownian motion cannot be greater than or equal to a and less than or equal to minus a at the same time for some a is greater than zero. This means we can write them together. Sorry, this should be a union. And if we write these two events together, uh, sim by a simple this uh, absolute value um, formula, this is nothing but uh, the same as the absolute value of Brownian motion process is uh, greater than or equal to a. So as we can see uh, in distribution.
This maximum Brownian motion of process is actually the same as the absolute value of a Brownian motion. And moreover, because um, W of t is of normal distribution 0 t, uh, we can rewrite this as the probability of the absolute value of uh, square root of t times z that is greater than over the a, okay, where this uh, z is a standard normal distribution. And uh, um, now we're ready to solve uh, the problem of this oxide law. Uh, first, but we will prove, first of all, I, I want to say that uh, we'll prove an alternate uh, way of this oxide law. Uh, um, instead of showing um, the, um, the time that's greater than zero, so we'll, we'll, we'll instead define another time. That is, we define tau being the infimum of t is between 0 to 1, such that uh, um, we'll define a tau instead of uh, um, the time of uh, Brownian motion greater than zero will define the tau as the infimum of uh, this t. And by the way, t is between uh, zero to one, uh, such that the, uh, the Brownian motion, let me still use w, the w of t equals m of one. So. This is like the maximum of this W of t in 0 to 1. Keep this in mind, this is not a deterministic, I'm sorry, this is not random anymore for a fixed, like a running motion. And this value is like a constant. Okay. So it's not, it's not a, let's say, it's not a stochastic process. And now, we want to show that, so we want to show that the probability of this tau being less than or equal to t is the distribution, uh, the oxide distribution we want to show earlier. Okay. So let's first uh, try to rationalize what does uh, this event mean? And let's uh, draw a figure, okay? So this is time, and this is uh, zero to one. If tau um, is less than t, and let's uh, draw t here, t is not random, t is just a fixed time between zero to one uh, we, uh, we choose. And if this Brownian motion, let's say, hit the maximum here, okay? So something like the maximum is like here. This is m of one. Then this tau right here, it's not less than t because Tau is like a, tau is here, okay? Tau is greater than t, all right? Because a maximum is achieved, maximum is achieved on this interval. And now alternatively, if we consider if the maximum is achieved here, okay. we have a Brownian motion, for example. Okay. 
the maximum is achieved on this interval, which is uh, from 0 to t, then we have our tau. And by the way, this is tau. And then we have our tau is less than or equal to this t. OK? So which means this event right here, the event of tau is less than t, is equivalent to the event of the maximum of W of T is achieved on 0 to T rather than from T to 1, okay? And because uh, um, if we want to rewrite this expression as, uh, um, um, as a using this maximum, that is uh, the maximum uh, between 0 to t, ws, is greater than the maximum of, uh, of this Brownian motion from t uh, to 1. Okay. All right. And And to, sh uh, to show um, the final, the oxide, we need to make a little bit of manipulation here. That is, we need to subtract W of T um, on both sides. Uh, to understand how we can compute the probability of this event, we have to take a step back and uh, we check at uh, our Brownian motion. Um, for example, this is a uh, one, and our Brownian motion maybe look like this. And this is a time t, and this is our w of t. This term right here is like the maximum of uh, this uh, Brownian motion, but being translated by an amount of w t. Then we can consider a new Brownian motion. This, let's say time prime and I'm, I'm, I'm drawing this time forward but still this time should have flow uh, in this direction so so as if we start here but we translate this Brownian motion by an amount so the length of right here is uh, this W of T okay by the Brownian motion, because of the mean of W of t is zero, if we shift by a mean zero, like random variable, we have another Brownian motion. And let's say this is Brownian motion uh, prime. In distribution, the probability of, of this uh, maximum of uh, This W of S is, for S is between 0 to T, subtract W of T is greater than maximum of uh, T is less than S is less than 1. W of S subtract W of T. The probability of this is the same because of the, uh, we translate um, the Brownian motion by a mean 0 random variable. We have another Brownian motion. This is actually the same as the probability of uh, um, from S to T, and this is W prime of S. Okay, 
is greater than, and this w prime of s is another. So w prime uh, is another Brownian motion. It's still a standard Brownian motion because it has mean zero and all the nice property of the standard Brownian motion w. And the right side, it's the same thing. Uh, as if we start our clock on t, then the length of this interval okay, is um, 1 minus t. Okay, and let's uh, name this uh, random, uh, this Brownian motion which we start our clock uh, from t, uh, this w um, double prime. And by previous, okay, and now by previous argument, distribution, the maximum, is the same as the absolute value. Um, and we can have the first one is distribution-wise. This is the same thing as square root of t times a standard normal random variable z1, okay? And distribution-wise, um, The second one is um, square root of 1 minus t times z2. And z2 and z1 are independent. Uh, it's because uh, the time interval of uh, the originally of this one and this one are non-overlapping. So uh, z1, z2 independent. And now it boils down to we want to compute the probability for two normal random variable, which we simplify it as um, this is uh, nothing but we square it first. This is uh, z square is greater than 1 minus t um, z2 square. Okay. And this is the same as um, we subtract we plus this t uh, z2 to the left, and then we divide uh, t on both sides. We'll have this is nothing but um, t is, I'm sorry, we divide this uh, z square, z1 square plus z2 square on both sides. We'll get this is nothing but z2 square uh, divided by z1 square divided by, and plus z2 square. And now we can rewrite this as this is nothing but uh, z2 square divided by z1 square plus uh, z2 square is the last sound we put in t. And z1, z2 are two um, independent standard normal random variable. And we call from 130b. So if we put z1 and z2 as the horizontal and vertical, this coordinate of uh, a two-dimensional Cartesian system, and we put this as theta, then what happens is um, this quantity right here, is nothing but the square of this sine theta is because sine theta equals square root of z1 square plus z2 square and we have this is z2 so it divides this uh, z2 and this is sine square theta is less than we put this t and we also know from 130b, um, so here I'll give you guys a reference, that is the textbook of 130b, uh, chapter 6, example 7b, that for a two independent standard normal random variable, the polar angle here is uniformly distributed between 0 
and the 2 pi. Okay. So theta is a uniform distributed between 0 and 2 pi. So this is the same as um, the uh, absolute value of sine theta is uh, less than or equal to square root of t, uh, which is the same. Uh, sine of theta is between uh, is between uh, square root of t and minus square root of t. And if we compute this, uh, we'll get uh, now because uh, um, the arc sine. So before we take arc sine of this. Uh, we have to um, notify one thing, that is arc sine only takes value uh, here, which is from minus uh, pi over 2 to pi over 2, and which means if our theta is, uh, is uniformly distributed between 0 to 2 pi, when we take arc sine, the probability of this is actually 2 times the probability of oxine. This oxine uh, minus oxine of uh, square root of t between theta uh, is between uh, oxine of uh, square root of t. Furthermore, by the uh, theta is uniformly distributed, and we can have, and the uniform distribution, the probability density is 1 over the uh, 1 over 2 pi. Okay, and the length of this interval right here is 2 times, is 2 times um, arc sine of uh, square root of t, and as a result, we have computed the probability, which is tau is less than equal to t, and uh, uh, is 2 times arc sine of uh, square root of t divided by 